It's been a long time since I last did a bash tutorial, but I thought I would kick the series off again and do a few more videos. So this is bash tutorial number six, arrays. There are two forms of arrays. Arrays being a large group of variables, either in a numeric index or an associative index, being a name. Now to declare an array in bash is slightly different than just a standard variable because you actually need to use declare and specify a type of array. So declare dash capital A is an associative array and declare dash lowercase a is a numeric array. Now you can also declare a local array, so you set out the function foo and then use the specifier local dash, in this case lower class a, to declare a local numeric array. Specifying a value in the array is no different than specifying a value for a variable. In some cases bash is particularly fussy on white space and this is one of the instances where it is fussy. Don't have any white space between the variable name equals and the value. You can fill out the array a bit further. Now you notice that you don't have to have consecutive numbers. So even though I've not declared anything between 2 to 8, I don't need to. I can just use 0, 1, 9 and I don't need it to be a string either. To read the values in the array is a little bit different than just a standard variable, although you have to use a dollar and a variable name for a standard variable. In the case of arrays, you have to wrap it in braces. So you go dollar, brace, variable name, in square brackets, the number or name, if you're looking at either a numeric or associative array, and then close brace. So that's for reading specific items within the array. But if you want to read the whole array, then use the at or asterisk. So let's test it out. So save that. I haven't made this script executable, so I have to run it with bash and then the script's name. So we have hi there and hi there 15. So that's where we looked at the individual parts of the array. And that's where we looked at the whole array. So what happens if I try and read the values of local array now? Well, it won't work because the local array was local to the function. Let's test it out. And indeed, there is no value on local array anymore because it was used in the function. So to set the values in an associative array, we literally call it a string instead of a number. So instead of using like number one here, I've just called it var one. I could call it anything else. I could call it, I could call it quidjibo instead. Let's just call it with var one at the moment. The value I've given it there doesn't have to be the same either. I just have done it for no particular reason. So the useful feature of an associative array is you can use it to query whether an item appears within the list. So rather than searching through an entire array, say from zero to a thousand, which would take a considerable amount of effort on like a for loop, especially if you're doing it numerous times, you could end up looping through an array millions of times, which is particularly wasteful. So yeah, instead of doing that, we can literally just check, does the value actually exist in the array? Now this is the method I use for my whitelist on no track. So I've literally gone if and a single square bracket and in quotes, using the same method of referencing the array earlier with the curly braces. So if associative array var1, then. And bash is particularly fussy about the white space here as well. You have to have a space inside of the square bracket so will var1 exist, or var1 doesn't exist, if else. And we end the if statement with phi. We can see how it works by referencing a variable that doesn't exist, so var3 in this instance. So let's see what happens. var1 exists and var3 does not exist. Rather than using a specific string, we could use a variable instead. So I've gone for the variable test and given it the value of var1. So in the if statement, I put in the variable test and I put a dollar before it. 
it's very weird how Bash uses the dollar sometimes and doesn't other times. So anyway, let's save that. And there we go. Once again, we can see it does work as VAR1 exists and VAR3 doesn't exist. The last example I want to go through here is adding a string into a numeric array. So rather than setting a specific index point, say 1, 2, 3, 100, 200, etc., I just want to add the string into the next index point on the array. Now we do that with the plus equals and then you add the value within brackets. So plus equals, open bracket, in quotes, in this case all work. Do a couple more times, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Now what I'm going to do is show you writing that array into a file. So let me just tell the user what's going on. Then use the command printf, open quotes, percent %s, backslash n quotes and space in quotes numeric array preceding it with a dollar and using the brace and then because we want to read the entire array use the at sign and then using the standard bash commands here of piping the output into a specific file tell the user we're going to read the file and then display the output with cat. There you go, reading file, and then it's outputted it on the screen. So that was an example of how to use arrays in Bash. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.